On today's episode, Blackhawks prospects hit the ice this morning in preparation for the Tom Curvers Prospects Showcase. And I'll talk about all the players that are heading up to Minnesota this weekend, as well as some key takeaways from day one of camp. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome on in to another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can go and check me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman too, or you could also go and follow my strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And as always, if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel and you're watching today's video on YouTube, what are you doing? Please do me a huge favor. Go and smash that subscribe button real quick. Hit the like button, comment down below. All those good things really help me out growing the show. And also by subscribing, that way you can get the latest episode as soon as it gets uploaded to YouTube every single day. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. As always, thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one stop shop for all things. Chicago Blackhawks. Thank you all for making the show your very first listen here to start off your day and to open things up on the show today, folks. Hockey season, it feels like it's officially arrived because after months and months away, Blackhawks prospects hit the ice this morning as prospect camp uh, ahead of the Tom Curvers prospect showcase began this morning and it just feels like you know the weather has kind of started to change here in the Chicago land area which you know is a little bit sad at the same time we're not getting those uh, 80 90 degree days it seems any longer I know Chicago is always good for a curveball in the weather every time uh, every now and again but it feels like we're starting to get some fall weather football is back and of course that means hockey season is back as well. And it feels like, you know, it's time to put up the uh, Seth Jones jersey. It's time to retire the Scott Foster jersey for the offseason. We're officially getting into hockey season now, folks, and I couldn't be more excited about it. Couldn't be more excited for things to get underway and for uh, a team that I'm actually excited to cover for the first time since really uh, taking over as the host of the show. But yeah, the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase kicks off this weekend up in St. Paul, Minnesota. I actually had forgotten that um, last year the Blackhawks hosted the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase at Fifth Third Arena. It had been two years since it had uh, been located up in Minnesota. I forgot that the Blackhawks were staying here in Chicago these first couple of days, which does make sense rather than going up there and sharing ice time and everything. It only makes sense for them to practice here in Chicago before their two scrimmages this weekend, the first of which comes at 6 p.m. Central time on Saturday against the St. Louis Blues, and then the latter will be against the Minnesota Wild at 3 p.m. Uh, Central time on Sunday. But yeah, things getting underway down in Chicago this morning. Very sad I wasn't there at Fifth Third Arena to see the prospects hit the ice. Uh, I sadly won't be able to be there tomorrow morning either due to the day job. But if they are still in Chicago on Friday, which uh, I'm still figuring out, I'm wanting to get the official word on that. But I do believe, uh, according to the schedule, they're skating at 10 a.m. on Friday morning. And given that they don't have uh, another session until Saturday up in um, St. Paul. I figure they're going to be skating on Friday at Fifth Third Arena. So if that is the case, I'll absolutely be down there to get uh, a glimpse of all the prospects in action and also with training camp right around the corner as well. Um, I'll be there for most days of training camp, seeing how things are shaking out for the Blackhawks ahead of the start of the 2023-2024 campaign. But yes, with the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase kicking off this weekend, we knew this was really going to signify the start of hockey season. Uh, And in the last couple of weeks, we saw the Minnesota Wild first release their roster for the showcase. A couple of days ago, the St. Louis Blues did the same. The last real piece of business for us Blackhawks fans was waiting for Chicago to officially release their roster and let us know which players are heading 
uh, up to St. Paul this weekend for the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. But just as a reminder, before I do get into the roster here in just a second, college players are not allowed to participate in this showcase. So don't be freaked out to hear that players like Frankie Nazar, um, Oliver Moore, Sam Renzel, Aiden Thompson, Ryan Green, so on and so forth. Don't freak out to hear that their names have been left off of this roster. There's a reason for that. It's because they aren't eligible. They're already uh, with their respected collegiate programs at this point in time, because obviously school is already in session. It's September 13th today. Uh, most of these kids have been in school now for probably a couple of weeks, hopefully doing very well in school, might I add. Don't need any uh, hiccups in the grades that may be costing them an opportunity to get on the ice. But yeah, without further ado, we finally got the Blackhawks roster for the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase this weekend. Um, and here it is in alphabetical order, 14 forwards to start things off. And who better to be at the top of the list than the first overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft in Connor Bedard, who I'll have more on here in just a second. But also uh, among the forwards on this roster, Colton Dock, second round pick a few years back. Yuri Felkman, I believe. Felchman, still up for debate. Could be Felchman. Uh, third round pick, 93rd overall this past year. Ryan Gagne. Gagne. Not exactly sure how to pronounce him, but he's an undrafted invitee. There's three of those for the Blackhawks, by the way, on this roster because with so many of their prospects being already with their collegiate programs, they do need some bodies throughout the course of the weekend. So Ryan Gagne, Gagne uh, has joined the forward group. Gavin Hayes is their third round pick from a, a year ago. Nick Lardis, who I think was an absolute steal with the 67th overall pick in this year's draft. Some people had him as a late first rounder, early second rounder. Paul Ludwinski is going up to Minnesota. Marcel Marcel, who has quickly become a fan favorite. Uh, Martin Misiak, the 55th overall pick, who was actually the uh, number one overall selection for the Erie Otters, I believe, in the uh, CHL import draft. Alex Ferrand, who was a fourth, fourth round pick this year, um, is part of the roster. Ryder Rolston who's going to be getting a big opportunity with the Rockford Ice Hogs this year after uh, spending the last three years with Notre Dame. Lucas Romeo is another UDFA invitee on the roster. Anti Sorella might be a guy that some, uh, some Blackhawks fans had forgotten about. He was a fourth round pick way back in 2019. He's been playing the last few seasons professionally over in Finland and is finally making the leap over to North America. So excited to see what he has in store for us this year. And then uh, Samuel Savoy is rounding things out, heading back to Gatineau. He's the 14th forward on the roster. Then as far as the defenseman, Nolan Allen, first round pick in 2021. Lucas Brenton, the third invitee on the roster. Louis Clevier, six foot seven, seventh round pick. Uh, he's been in Rockford the last couple of years. Ethan Del Mastro, no surprise to see him there. Wyatt Kaiser, who's getting a real big opportunity this year. Kevin Korchinski, who are still kind of uh, waiting to see what's going to be happening with him. And then Andrew Parat, just as kind of a depth guy to round things out. And then the two goalies on the roster that will be heading up to Minnesota, you could probably expect um, them splitting the two scrimmages. Drew Camesso, three-year starter for Boston University, second round pick in 2019. Super stoked for him, along with uh, Mitchell Weeks. Jackson Stauber was actually participating in uh, the first day of prospect camp at fifth third arena this morning, but he is not officially on the roster. Won't be making the trip up to Minnesota, leaving just Camesso and weeks to kind of tandem duo the weekend. But yeah, there's uh, the Blackhawks, I believe 23 man roster for the Tom Curvers prospect showcase here in 2023. Super excited to see these prospects in action. I mean, it's one thing when, you know, you watch them in drills and you don't really get any, key takeaways from this stuff. I mean, sure, you're looking at guys who can, you know, win battles and who are executing well, working hard, um, finding the back of the net when they're shooting drills, you know, making good passes, all that stuff. But there's nothing really all that tangible, especially uh, from day one of camp uh, in terms of on the ice stuff. But when, once we see them in action against uh, the 
St. Louis Blues prospects on Saturday and the Minnesota Wild prospects on Sunday. That's where we can actually start to learn, I think, a little bit more about some of these guys. And for the older players, how they've progressed since we saw them this time last year. And for the new guys, part of the 2023 draft class, it's our first opportunity to kind of evaluate them since being drafted in a game-like setting. So super excited for things to get underway this weekend. I did want to let you all know a little bit more information about the uh, three undrafted invitees that the Blackhawks have on their roster because Joseph Serpa was someone who I mentioned on the show last year. I didn't think the Blackhawks were going to wind up giving him a contract, but he lit it up at development camp for Chicago. So uh, for those out there curious about who these three UDFA invitees are for Ryan Gagne is what I'm going to call him. He turned 21 in July and he actually has a pretty impressive background. He led the Oshawa generals of the OHL in scoring this past season was 69 points in 66 games. He actually had more points than a uh, first round pick Callum Ritchie in this year's NHL draft, which, you know, to be fair, he is two or three years older than him, but still a pretty impressive background played four years of OHL hockey. We'll see what he's got this weekend. Uh, Lucas Romeo is a younger option. That's on the roster here. He turned 18 only back in March played off his first season of action in the QMJHL this past year, where he had 30 points in 64 games for the Charlotte town Islanders. Got some good size to him. Six foot two, 195 pound winger. See what he's got. And then on defense, the only one is Lucas Brenton, as I mentioned, who turned 20 back in April had 15 points in 68 games for the uh, Moose Jaw Warriors of the WHL. He's just a big Big body defensive defenseman, six foot four, 202 pounds, uh, has played three years in the WHL as well. So, those are there's a little bit more background information on the uh, three UDFA invitees. Probably don't expect to see too much from them, but uh, yeah, super excited to see things underway in St. Paul, Minnesota this weekend once the Blackhawks take on the Blues on Saturday night. All right, there is the official roster for the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. Coming up in just a moment, I will talk about some key takeaways from day one of camp at Fifth Third Arena. But first, I need to talk to you all about FanDuel. Football season is underway, and FanDuel is giving you the best chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every single time that they win in the regular season. All you have to do is is pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get a bunch of bonus bets every single time they win in the regular season. And you can use those bonus bets on everything from the money line to point spreads, over-unders, player props. You can use these bonus bets on everything. And I personally have been doing this for about a year now. Me and my good buddy have been just betting on Justin Fields over rushing yards every single game. Smacked week one, even though the Bears got smacked by the Green Bay Packers. My Sunday was a a little bit easier, Uh, wasn't uh, too big of a gut wrench thanks to the fact that I won money on Justin Fields rushing yards. You can win money too with FanDuel. It's an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win your bets, you get paid out instantly. There's no better place to bet on the NFL than FanDuel. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown to start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. It's fanduel.com slash locked on. All right, we're back here on the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. For segment two, obviously, I just went over the roster for the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase, which will get underway this Saturday in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, when all three teams head up north there. Um, I wasn't in person, as I mentioned, during segment one for day one of camp as the prospects are in preparation for the showcase. But there was still plenty that I saw on uh, social media. I read through various articles and there is still uh, plenty to discuss, even though it was day one. And, you know, it is just a camp. There's not all that much to take away from it in terms of what we saw on the ice. But in terms of the players that we saw, I think it is, you know, notable seeing these guys for the first time in quite a while. And the first and probably the most important thing that I read today was that Kevin Korczynski just looks uh, much thicker uh, than he did at this time last season. And that was really the concern about Kevin Korczynski. He's got good size, six foot two, six foot three, but he's definitely, you know, when he was first drafted, 
The concerns were, you know, he's really skinny. He's going to have to fill out his body. It's going to be tough for him at that size to be a sustainable defender at the NHL level. Everyone knew Kevin Korchinski had to get bigger. So to hear that he's thicker and just looks a little more grown into his body and more so just kind of like a man um, is absolutely music to my ears. And hearing that he's still absolutely buzzing out there. I mean, I'm telling you, Blackhawks fans, I haven't seen Oliver Moore skate in person yet. But Kevin Korchinski, as of this point, is the most gifted skater that I've seen in person. I mean, so effortless the way that he glides up and down the ice. And it, it actually blows my mind seeing how he's capable of, you know, jumping up in a rush. You think he's like the second or third man leading the rush, and he still gets back to prevent uh, prevent giving up an odd man rush the other way. He, he makes it look so effortless the way that he can get up and down the ice. So uh, super excited and super stoked to hear that Kevin Korchinski is starting to you know, round into his body a little bit more, grow into his body, I guess I should say. Um, and if he can get over that 200 pound threshold, I think that would be beautiful. I think him playing at 6'3", 200, 205 pounds, I think that's that's right where we want Kevin Korchinski to be. Another notable thing about Kevin Korchinski is, you know, obviously there's this great debate over uh, whether or not he's going to be in Chicago or if they're going to send him back to junior it does seem like the Blackhawks front office would like to burn the first year of that contract so they can get him to um, the second deal a year sooner. But it does seem interesting to hear Anders Sorensen talk about how driven Kevin Korchinski is to make the Blackhawks roster out of camp. I mean, it, it's a really interesting debate because I absolutely think he could benefit from another year in Seattle where he, he can go and dominate offensively once again and just continues to uh, get more comfortable and, and um, develop the defensive side of his game. I think that's that's really just the concerns that we have about Kevin Korchinski at this point because offensively, in terms of his skating, it looks like he has uh, all the skills to be an absolute wizard out there. But if he's a man on a mission and gives the Blackhawks coaching staff no real choice and is just one of their best defensemen, it's going to be very curious to see what happens. But I was also interested to see that he was skating with – Nolan Allen for uh, most most of the day here, and it seems like that could be a pairing that the Blackhawks roll with throughout their weekend scrimmages up in St. Paul. Those two are obviously familiar with one another uh, with their time with Seattle this past season as Allen was acquired by them around the midway point. They were also both on Team Canada's uh, World Juniors team that won a gold medal this past winter. And uh, it could be a, a defensive pairing of the future for the Blackhawks with Nolan Allen being known as a big body defensive defenseman kind of allows Kevin Korchinski perhaps to go and be a Rover and, you know, do his thing on the offensive side of things. So curious to see that those two have been paired together. And when that does happen, that means that Nolan Allen is being moved to the right side. And one conversation I've had a lot on the show is, all the left-handed defensemen the Blackhawks have in their system, Ethan Del Mastro, Alex Vlasic, Wyatt Kaiser, Kevin Korchinski, Isaac Phillips. I mean, there's so many left-handed defensemen that, you know, I, either a couple of them are going to have to learn how to play the right side or, you know, there's just not going to be the room for all these guys. And that's somewhere at some point in time, someone's going to have to get moved. Nolan Allen has been playing the right side and there have been talks even this summer about the Blackhawks wanting him to move to the right side. So we it's one thing to keep an eye on how he's going to handle that throughout camp, throughout the prospect showcase and moving forward. But with him moving to the right side, I do think that definitely opens up a more clear path for him to get to the NHL level if he proves to be a capable left-handed defenseman on his off wing like Nicholas Jalmerson was uh, for a long time. Another big takeaway for the Blackhawks has to be all the big defensemen that they have coming up. Nolan Allen, uh, I heard from Jay Zawas, he looked like an absolute grown man out there, looked like a grizzled NHL vet. And I mean, he, he looked like that when he was getting preseason action last year. Now, I haven't been in particular too impressed with Nolan Allen's play on the ice thus far, um, but obviously his size is uh, and the size as a whole is needed on the back end for the Blackhawks for far too long. They really didn't have any big body defensemen in their system. That's obviously changed with Nolan Allen. Ethan Del Mastro is a grown man as well at 19 years of age, six foot three, six foot four, over 200 pounds himself, plays a physical game. I think that's obviously notable. And even Kevin Korchinski, six foot three. Now, obviously, he's got a different body type than the other two and plays a different style. But even as an offensive defenseman, he's got some size to him as well. You love to see that. 
Isaac Phillips is obviously bigger. Alex Vlasic is obviously bigger. Uh, even throw Louis Clevier in there, six foot seven, former seventh round pick. It's starting to turn into the era of size on the back end for the Chicago Blackhawks. And go and look at all the Stanley Cup teams in recent years. Most of them have a lot of size on the back end. So definitely a good thing in my mind to see um, all these guys finally stepping onto the scene. And I think it's the right way to go about things on the back end. I also thought it was notable hearing Drew Camesso talk to the media today, saying that he worked with Boston Bruins goaltender Jeremy Swayman up in Boston almost every day throughout the summer. And he said, uh, I owe him a lot. He taught me so much. And obviously, Swayman was part of a very successful goalie tandem last year for the Boston Bruins, despite uh, them getting bumped out of the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But I do think it's obviously a, a no negatives to Drew Camesso working with an NHL veteran and a very solid goaltender in Jeremy Swayman. Cool to hear him as a little bit of a, a mentor for Drew Camesso as he's looking to make the leap to professional hockey this season and is expected to be in a tandem with Jackson Stauber uh, down with the Rockford Ice Hogs. Um, I also thought it was interesting hearing Anders Sorensen, who's been running this prospect development camp, obviously um, done that for the last two years now, when he asked about who really stood out to him today. And again, it's, you know, just day one of camp and you really can't have all too much takeaways from a day like this. Um, he said Wyatt Kaiser was someone who really stood out to him as well. And another left-handed defenseman that should be getting an NHL opportunity uh, in training camp right out of the gate for the Blackhawks. It's going to be interesting. And uh, we heard Wyatt Kaiser talk about this um, in the locker room as well. He, obviously, everyone's goal is to make the Blackhawks roster out of camp, but you know, that's the same goal for Alex Vlasic and for Isaac Phillips and for Kevin Korchinski, who's nipping on their heels. And, you know, I'm sure Nolan Allen and Ethan Del Mastro are, are going to get time in Rockford before they have any, they get any NHL opportunities. But those are two big body defensemen who are going to be nipping at the heels as well. So it's going to be um, fascinating to see which of these young left handed defensemen in particular kind of rise to the top here during the Tom Curvis prospect showcase leading into training camp with some momentum. Who's going to wind up being the left-handed defenseman on the opening night roster for the Blackhawks. Why Kaiser is a guy who's right there in the mix. Absolutely. And Anders Sorensen had a lot of good things to say about him. I personally am under the belief that Wyatt Kaiser wouldn't, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for him to go and develop his craft a little bit down in Rockford. Like, Alex Vlasic last year. Could he have been in the NHL? Absolutely. Yeah. But at the same point in time, there's no rush here whatsoever. I think it was just a smart ploy. And now Vlasic has some more experience and is ready to go and to make that leap heading into training camp as well. But look, if Kaiser is proving himself to be ready, can't deny that. So it's just going to be fascinating to hear and see kind of uh, who is making the most of their opportunities these next couple of weeks before the start of the season. All right, there are some of my quick takeaways from day one of Prospect Camp in Chicago. Coming up in just a moment, I'll get into a handful of other noteworthy Blackhawks tidbits from the past few days. All right, segment three back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Before I wrap things up, I do want to get into some other noteworthy tidbits here on the Chicago Blackhawks that we've heard in the last few days. And yesterday, I actually um, talked about how Chris Chelios is getting the honor of being the ninth player in Blackhawks franchise history to have his jersey retired. Um, and with that being the case, I figured it was going to open the door for some other past legends, such as uh, Steve Larmer, Jeremy Roenick, um, Eddie Belfour, um, Doug Wilson, who just recently got inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame as well. And since talking about that, it was kind of funny, like just a couple of hours after mentioning on the show, Ben Pope of the Chicago Sun-Times kind of mentioned uh, that in an article of his that the Blackhawks are going to reconsider uh, older generation players in terms of having their jersey number retired. And the Blackhawks are also considering maybe a, a ring of honor or a hall of fame type of ceremony for uh, the, uh, the uh, centennial uh, celebration, I believe, which I personally think is a good idea. Just given so many players are, are uh, in the mix to have their Jersey number retired. And this gets me to my second point. When I was talking about this yesterday, I, I mentioned that 
neither um, Patrick Sharp nor Nicholas Jalmerson reached the 1,000 game threshold that was a uh, kind of put into the guidelines as far as players having their jersey number retired by the Blackhawks and Corey Crawford not reaching the 700 um, game marker that's needed for goaltenders. Well, someone actually pointed out to me, like, I don't know how I missed this quite honestly, but uh, Charlie Rumeliotis mentioned in his article regarding this matter that uh, additional consideration will be given to members of the Stanley Cup winning teams with the Blackhawks, along with the entire body of work by a player to the organization, which includes time as a broadcaster and ambassador. So obviously that kind of sounds like Patrick Sharp, but that um, with, with that being like a little asterisk at the end of the guidelines that does open things up for a player like Corey Crawford and Nicholas Jalmerson and Patrick Sharp, despite not hitting all the guidelines that were set there by the Chicago Blackhawks. But just the fact that they mentioned, you know, a broadcaster and an ambassador, I think Patrick Sharp is the one out of those like three key players that does make the most sense. I mean, was with the Blackhawks for a long, long time. Uh, was there for all three Stanley Cups, a huge goal score for them. And I don't want to, you know, put him into like a, who is more important to the Blackhawks, him or Nicholas Jalmerson. That's a, that's a very tough debate, but make no mistake about it. Patrick Sharp was absolutely more well-known by the fans and was beloved by everyone here in Chicago. So I do think um, if any of those three are to get their Jersey number retired, it would be Patrick Sharp at number 10. But I personally think, um, it, it would make more sense to go with kind of like a, a ring of honor or a hall of fame type thing, because if you let Patrick Sharp in, I know his Stanley cups put him over the top, but guys who, you know, fit all the requirements and all the guidelines, how, how do you say no to them? Right? Like where, where does it end? The Blackhawks aren't going to have any numbers left at that point in time. So um, they are still eligible. I did misspeak when I talked on the podcast yesterday, Corey Crawford, um, Patrick Sharp, Nicholas Jalmerson are not eliminated from consideration, but going to be curious to see how the Blackhawks handle that matter moving forward, as well as guys like Steve Larmer, uh, Doug Wilson, Ed Balfour, and Jeremy Roenick. Another key tidbit that was mentioned on social media yesterday by NBC Sports Chicago is that Chelsea Dagger is not going anywhere as the Blackhawks goal song. And this has been up for debate and been a topic of conversation amongst a lot of Blackhawks fans here in the offseason with kind of the changing of the guard, the new era that's clearly being implemented here with the Blackhawks organization. A lot of people felt like it was time to change Chelsea Dagger to, to create a new goal song. There have also been a lot of people thinking there should be custom goal songs, which I personally think is um, an interesting idea, but it's just like a, a little bit too complex to, I think, act it's not punctual. It's not something that actually I believe can be implemented successfully when, you know, there could be redirects or it, it just, it's going to make a logistical nightmare at some point in time. It may sound great in theory, but I think it's going to be an absolute logistical nightmare, which is why I believe it, it's, it's kind of impossible, but Jamie Faulkner and Danny Wirtz confirmed to uh, Charlie Romeliotis and NBC sports Chicago that um, they're not even talking at all about changing Chelsea Dagger at this point. In, at this point in time, it is going to remain the goal song for the Chicago Blackhawks throughout at least this entire season, whether you like it or not. Um, I do personally think it is going to be time here in the next couple of seasons. I wouldn't even disagree with changing the goal song right now, um, but Chelsea Dagger is absolutely um, synonymous with the Chicago Blackhawks, but it also is like, with the Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves era. And I just think the Blackhawks would like to kind of let the focus be on the future. So um, I do really wonder if not now, then when, because it feels like only a matter of time. And speaking of things that are only a matter of time as well, Jamie Faulkner and Danny Wards confirmed to the guys over at CHGO that it's uh, not a matter of if, but when the all black Blackhawk sweaters make a comeback. And it does sound like it could be happening soon. And of course, who's the only person that doesn't like these all black sweaters. It's Mark Lazarus. Come on. Everyone loves the black. Everyone loves the all black sweaters. It was like my favorite thing in NHL 08, NHL 09, even in the NHLs today, even though they're kind of garbage, um, just switching to the black jerseys because they look so sick and the fan base has been screaming for them to make a return for what has it been like a, a decade now? I mean, I can't even tell you other than um, the stadium series jerseys that the Blackhawks wore against the Penguins and, and their other alternates that they've had. When, 
when's the last time they wore just the classic all black? I can't remember, but very glad to hear that those are going to be making a comeback. I know a lot of Blackhawks fans are on the same page as that one. Uh, and last but not least, I did want to mention that the Blackhawks, they did release a recent promo video for the first time, kind of promoting the start of the upcoming season. And uh, Ben Pope of the Chicago Sun-Times did mention that, um, which was evident in the video promo that they put out, the Blackhawks are going to start to shy away from the ready to work campaign that they had going on the last couple of seasons. And they're wanting to turn it into more of a, a fan based and fan driven type of slogan. They haven't exactly come up with it yet, but they really want to show the fans love for sticking with them throughout this rebuild. And even though the record was ugly last year, the United center, I mean, in the second half of the season, I really couldn't believe how packed the United center was. It was really ugly earlier on in the year. And I thought, man, this is just how it's going to be for the entire season. Not the case. Shout out to all you Blackhawk faithful that despite the team being absolute dog water, you showed up in the second half of the season. That's led to uh, the Blackhawks brass really wanting to show love to this fan base and whatever their next slogan is going to be. It's going to be more fan centric and more of a, a fan background to it. So um, yeah, should be, should be cool. I really wasn't a big fan of the ready to work campaign. Um, but as this team gets, you know, hopefully closer and closer to that competitive window, it's going to be more fun to start watching these promo videos and uh, these montages that'll get you hyped up for the start of the season. I'm already feeling a little buzzed myself. Um, super excited that hockey season is right around the corner, folks. Lots of Blackhawk stuff to discuss on here's show, on today's show. And that only tells you hockey season is back, baby. All right, folks, that is going to wrap up today's episode of Lockdown Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for tuning into the show. And do me a huge favor, go in, smash the like button, comment down below, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you're tuning into the audio version of today's podcast, make sure you're downloading all the recent episodes and go and leave me a review, five stars for free. I'd greatly appreciate it wherever you may be listening to your podcast. As always, I'm Jack Bushman. Go and follow me on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you can check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, it's going to do it here for the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.